We know you're a future millionaire. That's why you came here to discover with us the secrets of a regular accountant who beat the lottery system and built a steady source of income by winning the lottery not once, not twice, but 14 times and across several countries. So if you dream of being wealthy and successful, but people tell you that's like winning the lottery, don't let the odds bring you down. After watching this video, you'll be one secret ahead of them and closer to your dream. So let's get into this story. Just an accountant. Stefan Mandel was an ordinary guy with a big brain. He grew up in the communist era country of Romania, where there weren't many honest ways to earn money and none to get rich, at least not outside the law. So he was always in financial struggle. But Stefan saw the light in a government sanctioned lottery. It was the late 1950s, and Mandel worked as an economist for the Romanian Mining Consortium when he first came up with the idea of beating the lottery odds. Of course, Mandel wanted to find a sure way to hit the jackpot. So he brainstormed for a long time until he discovered the perfect mathematical formula that could predict five out of six winning numbers in a six number lottery game. Mandel started to believe that the lottery was his ticket out of the country. After thorough and careful research, the mathematician reportedly created a number choice algorithm based on his own method. He called this method combinatorial condensation. With this weapon on his side, he reduced the probabilities of predicting the winning numbers in such a game from one in several millions to one in several thousands. Establishing a methodology. The first time he tested his algorithm, four years after having developed his formula, he bought a lot of tickets with the help of loans he took from three of his closest friends. He really needed this thing to work, or he would end up being up to the neck in more debt than ever. When he finally put his discovery to the test at that time, he only aspired to win the second prize, which required matching only five numbers. But to his surprise, he won the jackpot. His idea proved successful, and all his effort paid off as he won the first prize of the game, approximately $19,000, which at the time, we're talking about Romania in the 70s, represented almost 18 years of his regular salary. So after paying all his debts and giving their money back to those who helped him in the endeavor, he still had $4,000 in profit, which was enough to start a new life. And that's precisely what he did. Finally, Mandel had enough money so he could leave communist Romania behind. Bye bye, Romania. Being a Jew, Mandel set his sights on moving to Israel. However, because it was almost impossible to leave his country at that time, Mandel had to bribe foreign ministry officials to escape safely. For a while, he settled in his new home in Israel, but soon after, he moved again. This time, he and his family started moving from place to place around Western Europe until he finally decided to leave the old continent and settle down in Australia a country with a stable and established economy in the 1980s and not too expensive to live in. It was in this country where he would devise his most extensive plan yet. New citizenship, new lottery. When Mandel gained Australian citizenship, Mandel was now able to do business in the British Commonwealth countries of which Australia was a part of at the time. What this meant, in a nutshell, is that his new citizenship allowed him access to the UK lottery system as well as Australia's. He started with a formula that would fit in well with the UK lottery system, and this strategy was much less complicated. He did not attempt to predict the winning combination of numbers. Instead, he needed to implement a way to acquire as many tickets as possible. It kind of worked as what we would call a brute force attack when trying to hack a system today. It was a tedious process, but easier than the one he applied in Romania. The winning steps. Mandel took his time to study the UK lottery system and established a series of six steps he would follow in order to make a profit from it. Let's take a quick look at what he did precisely. Step one, identify a lottery that consists in hitting six numbers between one and 40. Combinatory calculations reveal that in such a set of numbers, there are 3,838,380 possible combinations. Step two, finding a lottery that offered a jackpot at least three times bigger than the total amount of possible combinations. According to his calculations, a relation lower than this would not be enough to obtain profits and pay all his investors. Oh yeah, he now had investors and a sort of society called the Lotto Syndicate. Step three, attract people and raise money, buy a lot of tickets and promise them to split the profits. That's how the syndicate was formed. 
Step four, print millions of tickets with all the possible combinations. This step sounds a bit weird, but you see by that time, you could print the tickets at home and then deliver them to be processed. So he printed millions to ensure he got the winning combinations somewhere in the bulk. Step five, deliver all the printed tickets to the delivery officials. There were tons of paper involved in this bulk delivery, but they had to accept it. The whole process was completely legal. Step six, take the prize and enjoy the profits. The Lotto Syndicate. The first time he executed his operation, Stefan was forced to write all the possible combinations by hand. This operation required an enormous amount of work and he risked falling into massive debt if he made a mistake. But the 1980s arrived and with them, the start of the computer revolution. And Mendel was happy to incorporate computerized help into his schemes. Stefan reunited hundreds of people who believed in his system and invested along with him. Mandel then bought several computers and a dozen printers that started working tirelessly according to an algorithm he created. Now, filling every possible combination and printing them was a lot easier. He and his syndicate managed to hit the jackpot in 12 lotteries across Australia and the UK. And that's without counting that they also won the second and third prizes since they placed bets on all positive combinations. Mandel kept cracking lotteries, and each time the government enacted new rules or laws they hoped would put an end to the successful heist, such as prohibiting printing tickets at home, forcing lottery buyers to acquire their tickets in person at stores, and prohibiting bulk acquisitions of tickets. As a result, the syndicate was slowly forced toward a new target, the American dream. Mandel now wanted to make it into worldwide headlines by showing off his method. So in 1992, he gazed upon the Virginia Lottery in the United States. It was a perfect candidate for his algorithm since the $27 million jackpot was more than three times larger than number of combinations, 7 million tickets. He only needed to work with the syndicate again. And that's how he managed to get above $3,000 from approximately 2,500 investors, amassing a total investment of $7.5 million. They now could buy all the combinations, print all the tickets at their operations base in Sydney, Australia, and ship them to the US. The poor guys at the Virginia Lottery still worked using the old ways. It was the perfect victim. Soon enough, a little army of couriers would go around the state buying tickets everywhere. It was all math, they trusted the numbers. But one store became overwhelmed with their requests and couldn't make it before the deadline. So a lot of tickets needed by the syndicate remain unprocessed. And we mean a lot. From the 7.1 million tickets they needed to buy, only 5.5 million were processed. So there was a huge possibility that they could still lose all this time, money and effort as only one of those 1.6 million combinations could end it all. But they were oh so very lucky. On February 15, 1992, they all attended the lottery's final draw, and after hours of frantically reviewing all the combinations in their power, they found the winning tickets. They won the jackpot, the second, the third, and dozens of other minor prizes, amassing an overall amount of $30 million. The aftermath. After winning all that money, the genius got spoiled. He didn't compensate all his investors with the massive amount of money they were expecting to receive. Instead, they received meager compensation that barely surpassed their initial investment. The worst thing for them is that they couldn't sue him or complain because technically, he did comply with his obligations and gave them back their initial investment. The CIA and the FBI investigated Mandel for more than four years, but the authorities concluded that technically, he hadn't violated any rules. However, as before in Australia and the UK, and after discovering his method, the American lottery system was forced to change the lottery rules so they would never have to face another Mandel again. But suppose you want to replicate Mandel's genius idea. In that case, we have to give you the bad news. Today, most lotteries have several protective mechanisms to prevent this kind of heist. They ensure that purchasing all tickets would exceed the value of the pool prize, and they also limit the number of times one individual can participate in the lottery. These changes made this method obsolete. It is not possible to use anymore. It's worth noting that Stefan wasn't hiding at all. It was all legal. There is a story that he even discussed with the Australian lottery officials what he was planning to do, but no one took him seriously. In the long run, it was a big mistake to underestimate this man who won the lottery 14 times in the course of 30 years.